Hi, welcome back to the Bluebird Bookshelf, your home for wholesome and happy books for kids. If we haven't met yet, my name is Kelly and I'm so excited to read with you today. Parents, don't forget to stick around at the end. I'm gonna teach you exactly why this book is a great choice and what specifically makes it a really great tool to help your child become a better reader. Okay, kids, now that we have the grown up stuff out of the way, let's talk about our book for the day. I cannot wait to read this book with you. We're actually gonna read this book, 10 Little Fingers and 10 Little Toes by my favorite author, Mim Fox, two times. The first time that we read this book, we're gonna read it all the way through just like normal so you can learn the words. I promise it's really easy and you'll learn them quickly. The second time that we read through this book, we're actually gonna sing. Yes, this book is a song. Now, the song that we're gonna sing isn't mine. It's Mim Fox's very own song, so I can't take credit for it, but I want to share it with you because I think that you'll love it. One thing I want to tell you about this author, Mim Fox, she's from Australia. Australia is a country called the Land Down Under. Why is it called the Land Down Under? Because if you look at the earth, Australia is kind of underneath the earth. It's on the bottom of the earth, and they call it the Land Down Under. So you're going to hear a new word in this book, and that word is Eiderdown. Eiderdown is a fancy word for a really fluffy blanket that they use in some other countries like Australia. So when you hear that word, just remember Eiderdown means blanket in Australia. I have a question for you. Why do you think Mim Fox chose the, to use the number 10 to talk about fingers and toes? Hmm. Do you have 10 little fingers and 10 little toes? Hmm, I bet you do. Are you ready? Let's read. There was one little baby who was born far away. See, far away. And another who was born on the very next day. There he is. Now there are two babies. And both of these babies, as everyone knows, <gasps> look, fingers and toes, had 10 little fingers and 10 little toes. There was one little baby who was born in a town and another who was wrapped in an eiderdown. Eiderdown is an Australian word for big fluffy blanket. So that's why she used the word eiderdown there. Ooh, now there are four babies. One, two, three, four. And both of these babies, as everyone knows, had 10 little fingers and 10 little toes. Good job. There was one little baby who was born in the hills. See the hills? And another who suffered from sneezes and chills. Oh, he's sick. Look at his little nose. He's having to take medicine. Have you ever had to take medicine when you were suffering from sneezes and chills? I bet you have. And both of these babies, as everyone knows, had 10 little fingers and 10 little toes. You got it. Ooh, she's cold. There was one little baby who was born on the ice and another in a tent who was just as nice. And both of these babies, as everyone knows, had 10 little fingers and 10 little toes. But the next baby born was truly divine. That means wonderful. A sweet little child who was mine, all mine. 
And this little baby, as everyone knows, do you know what's next? I bet you do. <gasps> Has 10 little fingers. Oh, 10 little toes. And three little kisses. <gasps> On the tip of its nose. The end. Okay, remember I told you we were gonna read this book two times. So this time we're gonna read it by singing it. Remember the title, 10 Little Fingers and 10 Little Toes. Now, I can't take credit for this song. Miss Mim Fox wrote this song, wrote this book actually to sing with this song. So this is her song, not mine, but I can't wait to share it with you. Are you ready? Let's read. There was one little baby who was born far away and another who was born on the very next day. And both of these babies, as everyone knows, had 10 little fingers and 10 little toes. There was one little baby who was born in a town and another who was wrapped in an eider down. And both of these babies, as everyone knows, had 10 little fingers and 10 little toes. There was one little baby who was born in the hills and another who suffered from sneezes and chills. And both of these babies, as everyone knows, had 10 little fingers and 10 little toes. There was one little baby who was born on the ice and another in a tent who was just as nice. And both of these babies, as everyone knows, had 10 little fingers and 10 little toes. But the next baby born was truly divine, a sweet little child who was mine, all mine. And this little baby, as everyone knows, has 10 little fingers, 10 little toes, and three little kisses on the tip of its nose. The end. I hope you enjoyed this story today as much as I did. I had so much fun reading with you and singing with you, and I hope you'll come back again to read more stories with me later. Parents, don't forget, I have a little clip for you at the end to explain why this book is a great choice to help your child become a better reader. I hope that's helpful for you. I'll see you next time. Bye. Okay, parents, let's talk about 10 Little Fingers and 10 Little Toes. Mim Fox is one of my all-time favorite children's book authors because of one particular feature that she adds into all of her books. First of all, well, I guess there are two features, actually. The first thing that she does is she uses a lot of sight words, and she repeats them so your child can memorize them. And yes, we actually read from memory. So if your child wants to read a book over and over again, or if you think they're not reading simply because they have the pages memorized, that's incorrect. They may not have one-to-one -one correspondence. So for example, they might say, there was one little baby who was born far away, and they're kind of not pointing to each word as they read, that's called one-to-one -one correspondence. So just because they have memorized the sentence and they can't assign the words that they know to the words on the page, that's okay. That's just a development stage. And so eventually, the more that you read and as you point to words, they will figure that out themselves. So them memorizing a book is a great way to help them start reading and to let them feel confident that they're reading 
And actually, if I covered up this page, you could probably, or if I just showed it to you really quickly, you could read it in a few seconds because you have memorized what these words look like all together. So memory is awesome. So she uses sight words repeatedly, and that also has allowed her to use picture clues to help the children fill in the blanks for the words that they don't know. So these are the, the two main reasons why I love Mim Fox's books. Um, so you can see here there was one little baby who was born far away and she shows the picture of the person pointing to the far away place. And then again, and another who was born on the very next day. This one's a little less obvious, but um, they'll still get it. And then here, I love how she did the pictures in this book too, because you see this is a progressive picture, but the pages are very similar. White background, the babies are looking at each other, um, and then the words repeat. So, and both of these babies, as everyone knows, and then she'll show the same thing, a white background with the 10 little fingers and the 10 little toes more front and center in the beginning of the book. Um, as we go to the end of the book, it becomes a little less obvious, but by that point, they should have already realized the pattern. Same thing here, there was one little baby who was born in a town, so town is the word that they're gonna learn here on this page, and another who was wrapped in an eider down. They can use the picture clues to remember, help them remember that. Again here, like I said, and both of these babies, as everyone knows, white background, the babies are adding up and they're looking at each other, so it's a very similar pattern. 10 little fingers and 10 little toes right there. Same thing, there was one little baby who was born in the hills. It's very, you know, now that you can see it, you probably can't unsee it. Um, the pattern just continues to repeat, and because of those visual patterns, and because she uses the sight words repeatedly over and over and over again, your child will learn to read this book really quickly, especially if you sing it to them. What's learned in song is remembered long, so sing it to them and they'll memorize it super quickly. This will become a favorite in your household. Your child will feel confident that they're reading. Um, they'll be proud of themselves. They'll enjoy reading and it'll just be a lot of fun. They'll also eventually learn one-to-one -one correspondence if they don't have it already. Um, you may have to help them like on the last few pages because it changes a little bit, especially with this, this page is a little bit tricky. But eventually, especially if you sing it, they'll memorize it and they can read this book to you at night before bed or anytime you need to calm down. It's a great choice to have in your library. Really highly recommend it. It comes in a board book like this one. It also comes in a hardback and paperback so you can get whichever kind you like. Hope that helps. Bye.